Here we have my um, test bed for my uh, outboard motor. Uh, I have taken a 1980-1979 circa that year. Um, five horsepower Suzuki two-stroke. Stripped off the power head and put a electric motor on. Uh, I'll just take the hood off in a second. Uh, with the hood off, you can see it's a uh, permanent magnet DC motor. It's rated 24 to 48 volts. I'll just zoom in on that, see if you can get that detail. There you go. It's um, made by Mars Electric LLC. It came from an American website. Uh, I'll give you details if you need, if you want those, what it is. I think it's rated at about 4 horsepower continuous um, and a bit more for short period. As I say, I'll give you the details and you can look that up yourself. Uh, that is mounted onto an aluminium plate. I'll, do a, I'll come in closer and show you how I've mounted that. You can now see the motor mount. It's a 6mm aluminium plate with a hole cut out for the motor to go through in the middle. Uh, then I've welded more 6mm aluminium onto the side of the motor here and on that side and on the other side. They have slots cut in them to give a little bit of movement uh, when aligning the motor. Uh, the motor's aligned through a um, coupling which was bored online. The coupling uh, has a rubber bush in the middle to give it a little bit of play so alignment isn't quite so crucial as it might otherwise be. I'll uh, put the hood back on in a second and fire her up just to the test bed. This is not how you should test an electric motor, but this is how I'm doing it because I haven't got any other batteries. I've got three car batteries combined with um, two smaller 12 volt sealed lead acid batteries all wired up in a mess um, going through an Alltrax NPX controller. Now that is wired up properly, obviously not particularly safely, but this is only for a test and it will all be done properly later. Um, so I'll put the hood back on now and uh, give the engine a fire up and see what kind of thrust it's producing. Now the hood's back on, I'll quickly show you my potentiometer, which I'm using to control. Uh, it's not the right throttle that you can buy for the motor. Uh, it's simply a slider from an audio control, but it's uh, doing the job. It's got to be rated at 5, 0 to 5 kilo ohms. Um, as I say, not even wired up properly, but it's doing for a test. Now, I'll take that out of the view and lower the camera to the water and show you how it works. Right, there's obviously no power at all going through the motor. Sliding the slider up a tiny bit. A little bit more. Not sure if you can see through the water, but the prop's begun to turn ever so slightly. It's not going to get us very far. Just a tiny bit of power applied now. You can see there's some thrust being produced, probably enough to push us along, just about to push you along. Let's gradually slide the slider up more. See the throttle's increasing. It's probably enough to push you along at hopefully a couple of knots on the little boat, but that'll probably be told once we're in the water. Start up a little bit further. Again, a bit further. Uh, we're not there yet with the power. We're probably under halfway. Just keep sliding up. Still have a lot of power being Go 
turns out hopefully what will be more like a cruise on speed. The side of about a third of the way up. Here it's uh, other than the uh, northern walk, it's pretty quiet. Down to virtually no speed. Pretty much off. So what that proves is despite the unsafe wiring, it looks well all working absolutely fine. Still turning just about, and turn it off. Let's take the hood off now, just to see if the wires are hot or anything's hot under there. Just unclipping the clips not very good. No, no heat. No, the wires aren't hot. It's all okay. Nothing's moved in here. It's all absolutely fine. Well, I'm going to put some more water in the uh, in the bin and give it another go to see if we can get any better idea of what sort of um, power it's got without all the uh, bubbles and froth, but uh, I'll do that in a minute. Right, I'm uh, just filling the barrel up more, and if you look at the uh, the wires etc, I think that given my very Heath Robinson setup here, I would be uh, losing quite a lot of vol voltage through those wires. Um, I haven't got a voltmeter on it to test it, but I would think they probably it's quite a bit of a drop off there, so no, I know it works. I'll get it on the boat, um, and then I'll uh, try to get some bigger wires on it and uh, see how that does, and how that affects the voltage. I may need that I need five batteries to take it up to a nominal 60 volts because of the uh, voltage drop off and voltage loss, but uh, that's something I can try uh, and test out. I don't think I'll need any more power, so it'd probably be better to go for range rather than power. Right, I've now taken the uh, water level up to uh, just probably I suppose what you call the second cavitation plate, if that's probably not what it's called, but what I'll do for this analysis, let's just turn the camera over so slightly that way. Yep, let's um, give it another go. See if it, see what it's like with a bit more water in there. Shouldn't make much difference, but uh, might be easier to see what power we're producing. Just turning the uh, Throttle up a little bit. A little bit of throttle. I've also tipped the uh, using the bracket on the motor, which is just uh, here. I've brought the motor up by a notch, so it's not resting against the side of the bin. I'm not sure if that'll make any difference, but hopefully it means it's not going to punch a hole in the bin when I turn the power up. Just turn the power up a bit now. It's uh, leaning in quite a lot actually, so I'm going to support the back of the motor to the power. So all in all we're pretty pleased uh, with the uh, initial results.